Hi, I'm Miley Oye, hoping to provide guidance on the next step of recovering a hack site. Identify the vulnerability. Thus far, you've quarantined your site, verified ownership of your site in Webmaster Tools, and most recently, overcame one of the major hurdles in recovery, assessing the damage. In doing so, you are able to estimate the extent of the damage caused by the cybercriminal, as well as understand her intent. The goal of this video is for you to now identify the possible vulnerability, the root cause, that allowed the cybercriminal initial entry to your site. Identifying the initial vulnerability is an important step. If we don't recognize and correct the root cause during the recovery process, it's highly likely that even if your site's content is restored, the cybercriminal or someone else could strike again. It's also possible that there are multiple independent hacks in place. Finding and fixing one of them does not mean that you should stop searching for others. We'll cover some of the common ways that sites become vulnerable, such as a virus-infected administrator system, weak or reused passwords, out-of-date software, and permissive coding practices. Hopefully, by understanding these common weaknesses, you'll be able to understand how the hacker broke into your site. Like the prior step, assess the damage, Several actions in this video require technical skill, such as file system access to the server, running commands in the terminal, and viewing database records and source code. If these tasks seem too technical, you may want to review an earlier step, contact your hoster and build a support network. Let's start by discussing the first possibility of a virus-infected administrator's computer. This is just one of the many vulnerabilities that may have allowed the cybercriminal entry to your site. On an administrator's virus-infected computer, the hacker may have installed spyware to record the admin's keystrokes. Once the administrator typed their username and password to log into the site, their login credentials were passed to the cybercriminal for future entry. This enabled the cybercriminal to easily access your site. To check for viruses on administrator systems, we recommend that owners of hacked sites run several reputable antivirus scanners, or AV scanners, on every computer used by the administrator to log into the site. Since new malware infections are constantly being designed to evade scanners, this action, while quite helpful, is still by no means a foolproof method of virus detection. Furthermore, AV scanners may also report false positives, so running several scanners can provide more data points to determine whether a vulnerability actually exists. In addition to running AV scanners on administrators' devices, we also recommend scanning both your web server and, if possible, the devices used to update or post to the site, just to be safe. If the AV scanner detects spyware, a virus, Trojan horse, or any suspicious program, that may be the vulnerability which allowed your site to be initially compromised. But to further investigate whether a virus-infected administrator system is the culprit, let's take a look at the site's server logs. In the logs, check for unusual activity by the administrator who owns the infected computer. Similar investigation likely occurred for you in the last step, assess the damage. It's possible that log files have been altered by the hacker, making this harder to diagnose. But if not, correlating the administrator's username with suspicious commands in the log file is further evidence that a virus on an administrator's system caused the site to be vulnerable. While investigating the log files, let's introduce a second potential vulnerability, weak or reused passwords. Cracking a weak password can be relatively easy for cyber criminals, and by doing so, it gives them direct access to your server. On the other hand, strong passwords help prevent such abuse. Strong passwords have a combination of letters and numbers, punctuation, no words or slang that might be found in a dictionary, and are far more difficult to crack. However, when passwords, even if they are strong passwords, are reused on various applications, it only takes one security breach on one application for a hacker to find the login and password, then attempt to reuse it elsewhere. To investigate if weak or reused passwords may be the problem, in the server log, check for undesirable activity, such as multiple login attempts for an administrator or an administrator making unexpected commands. Make note of when the suspicious activity occurred, because understanding when the hack first took place helps determine what backups may still be clean. The third potential vulnerability, and one of the most common, is when software installed on your server, the operating system, content management system, blogging platform, applications, or plugins, is out of date. Why is out of date software potentially harmful? Well, one way that software can become out of date is when the current version contains a security vulnerability. If you have such out of date software installed on your site, then your site, 
Not just the software now has a security vulnerability. Most software companies release a patch or new version of their software when a security issue is discovered. While this makes it imperative for existing users to upgrade, unfortunately, not all the users, in this case site owners, are aware of the security advisory. The vulnerable software remains on their site and is exploited by a cyber criminal. If you recognize your site is running outdated software, that might be the root cause of your hack. By researching the outdated software version, you may find results detailing a security advisory. If so, the possibility that outdated software caused your site to be vulnerable is quite likely. One important aside I'd like to mention. As a best practice, always aim to keep your server software up to date, regardless of whether outdated software resulted in a vulnerability issue this time. The last vulnerability exploited by hackers I'd like to cover is permissive coding practices, such as open redirects and SQL injections. Permissive coding practices provide cyber criminals an open door to your site. By exploiting lenient code, the hacker is able to perform many harmful actions. One example of permissive coding is open redirects. Open redirects are coded with the intention for the URL structure to allow the addition of another URL, so users can reach a useful file or web page on the site. However, hackers can abuse open redirects by adding their spamming or malware page to the site's open redirect. Now URLs that look like a legitimate page on a reputable site actually utilize open redirects on the good site to bring users to the spammy content, or even worse, malware or phishing pages. If your site is abused by open redirects, you likely noticed the message in Webmaster Tools provided example URLs that included open redirects to an undesirable location. This type of hacking is a vulnerability that doesn't even require that the cyber criminal have access to your server. But identifying the cause of an open redirect means understanding why the configuration exists on your site. Open redirects may be completely unused in your site's design, but just a feature in your software allowed by default and then exploited by spammers. Or, perhaps your code should have explicitly disabled the potential vulnerability by prohibiting off-domain redirects. Or perhaps the site should have signed the redirect so that only those with the properly hashed URLs and the cryptographic signature could be redirected. The final permissive coding practice that leaves your site vulnerable to hackers is SQL injection. If your site uses a database, and especially if you are infected with the malware type SQL injection, it's very possible that your site was compromised by a hacker adding rogue commands to user input fields executed by your database. SQL injections update records in your database with unwanted spam or malware content, or they dump valuable data to output for the hacker. In diagnosing the root cause of a SQL injection, you'll need an in-depth understanding of your site's source code. Look for suspicious content in the database, such as otherwise regular text fields that now show iframes or scripts. For the suspicious values, check that the user input is validated and properly escaped, and that input is strongly typed so that values may be cast as integers or strings, but not executed as code. If you notice permissive coding practices affecting your database, SQL injection may be a root cause vulnerability on your site. To further detect the cause of SQL injections, as well as gather more details when identifying vulnerabilities on your site, a common question is, should I run a vulnerability scanner? The answer, of course, is that it's up to you. Please be aware that vulnerability scanners differ from antivirus scanners. Vulnerability scanners can be far more invasive and have greater potential to cause unwanted damage to your site. Please follow all directions, such as backing up your site, before running the scanner. Once you're able to determine the vulnerability, it's time to move to the next step. Clean and maintain your site.